Like a lot of you, my wife and I have been stuck at home, trying to pass the time watching our favorite movies or playing games. One day kind of flows into the next, you know? It was getting hard to keep things from being too boring, not being able to hang with friends, and then we got our stimulus package. My wife surprised me with a Nintendo Switch Lite. At the time, the things were pretty hard to come by, but somehow she found a guy who had one on eBay for a decent price, and it arrived around early April. She even bought me a brand new game to go along with it. Something we could play together. Animal Crossing New Horizons. I have to admit, when I first uploaded the game, I wasn't familiar with the mechanics or the previous entries in the series, but after only about an hour of playing, I found myself hooked. There was just so much to do in the game, and none of it even felt tedious. Before I knew it, I was chopping, fishing, bug catching, and crafting for hours on end. My wife made me take a break and created her own character. We named our island Amity, to represent friendship with the animals. And before long, we were fighting over whose turn it was to grab some nook miles, or to purchase furniture from the store. There's always something to do in the game, and I appreciate the fact that it ran in real time, because that encouraged a more relaxed play than the usual games I was accustomed to. I saw online some people were using the Switch clock to skip forward days, weeks, and sometimes even months at a time, but I was more than happy to play at my own leisure, and enjoy what the game had to offer every day. Eventually, our little virtual island started to expand. My wife and I were taking turns going to mystery islands to harvest materials or collect more miles, and then gathering enough animal neighbors to cover the entire island. Every day we logged in, and there was something to look forward to. New fish to catch, a new fossil to dig up, a visiting character in the town plaza selling shoes or shirts, and the island got prettier with our efforts to plant flowers or pull weeds. I never really considered that this simple game would be so fun. And then, one day, I was on Reddit searching for a way to get to the rest of the fruit that we hadn't found, and I saw people sharing what were called Dodo Codes, basically the game's way of allowing for online multiplayer access from one world to another. Hey, this is pretty cool. How would it work? I asked Marcy, showing her one of the posts that was talking about the turnip prices. Now, that was one aspect of the game I never really understood, but it was exciting seeing other players talking rapidly about it like it was some kind of stock exchange. We'd have to purchase an online subscription. It's like $20 for a year, I think. But it doesn't seem worth it. We have lots of other monthly packages, she told me. I checked it out myself and had to agree. There weren't many games on the Switch that seemed to function with the online aspect, and a lot of people online were complaining. Still, it was enticing. I couldn't stop thinking about ways to make our little island community better, and eventually, I just bought a subscription to try it out for 14 days. If we don't like it, we can turn it off. Besides, we're playing the game religiously. Figure it's a good investment, I told Marcy, when she found out. We had a little quarrel about it, but eventually, when she realized all the fun features we had available to go to someone else's island, she was on board. Not a day later, we advertised our code on a Reddit message board and asked for anyone to bring us apples and oranges, the two fruits our island lacked. But there weren't any takers. Disappointed, we took a break from the game for a day or two, occupying ourselves with other hobbies. But I didn't get a little obsessive about these things. So, eventually, I checked the Reddit thread again and discovered that we had one user eager to come over. Hey, I'm Alex. Island is called... Damn it, because why the hell not? Got all the fruits and even a special piece of furniture I know you'll love. I figured what the heck, grab a new code, let him come over. In case you're unfamiliar with how online works in this game, it's a bit of a tedious process. Apparently the codes only work one time, and when I had to request that my island be available for visits, I messaged Alex and waited for a few hours before finally getting the chance to play again. Then it took a dang five minutes for the connection to be established, and he was finally over. Like other simulator games, New Horizons gives you the chance to customize your avatar. It looked like Alex was a fairly new user because he was still wearing the basic clothes from the beginning and a nondescript face. Either that, or he just didn't want to emulate his facial features in the game. He ran out from the airport onto my island and dropped off the fruits immediately along with the promised rare furniture. It was so amazing, and I quickly texted out a thank you. His little virtual character stood there in my little town square, tapping his foot and slowly typing back. I waited, wondering if he wanted a tour of our island. I mean, it was still a work in progress. And instead, he asked, Friends? I shrugged, and didn't see why not, so I told him I would send my switch code later. 
then the connection got poor and we wound up losing signal. When this happens on normal games, your progress is saved, but not New Horizons. Those fruits and items that Alex had just given me, gone. I sighed in frustration and messaged him on Reddit explaining what had happened, but didn't get a response until late that evening. I'll come back over when you respond to my friend request. I checked my Switch home screen. Sure enough, he had sent me one. I scratched my head for a moment, trying to remember if I sent him my code that would allow him to do that, but I, I couldn't remember. It was pretty late and Marcy had already gotten on to me about playing games for so long, so I logged off and went to bed, not thinking anything of it. The next day I woke and did my morning workout before logging back onto the game and running through the daily list of points to collect. Then I saw a letter through the mail from Alex. It included a gift of 10,000 bells. And it said, Sorry about before. Hope to see you and your island again soon. I decided to give him a second chance. I activated the internet and let him come over to our island. Like before, he didn't waste any time responding, and when he arrived, he asked if he wanted to play a timed rally. Basically, there was an item in game that lets you challenge each other to catch fish or bugs, and since I had nothing better to do, I said, sure, why not? We set the timer for five minutes and ran around the island catching as many fish as possible. While we were doing it, Alex would occasionally text messages, teasing that he was going to win. A few of them were a little stranger, though. Fun, fun is being with others. I hate being alone. And I never want to stop playing. Can we be best friends? The last one took me by surprise. See, I know the game had features that allowed players to be considered best friends, but every article I had read so far said that doing something like that was risky. Apparently a best friend in the game could use their axe or shovel to destroy your island, and... Well, that made me a little nervous. When Alex asked for the friend request, our island had just barely made it to two stars. Now I was close to three stars and getting more things unlocked. I didn't want to risk it. So for now, I just ignored it. Logged off the game and went back to normal life with other hobbies and chores. My wife and I agreed that we shouldn't play too often anyways. But every time we did... Alex would shoot us a message. You online? You online? You online? Marcy thought it was a tad obsessive. Don't get me wrong, I feel bad for the kid. Probably has nothing better to do, she said. And when I did have a chance, I would either let him come over or go to his island. The first time I did, I was a bit surprised that he hadn't worked hard to make his island community look great, despite the fact that the online clock said that Alex had been playing for over 200 hours. The island he had looked like a dump. Weeds everywhere, along with discarded crafting materials and holes everywhere. Even weirder was how much pride Alex took in it. He was eager to give me a tour, and I did my best to seem impressed. Then, of course, before I signed off, he asked again to answer his request to be a best friend. Now, I'd never really played much online before. I mean, before all this, I was working a 9-to-5 job. Even the idea of sitting down to play a game at all seemed a bit far-fetched. But I figured Alex seemed trustworthy enough, despite his idiosyncratic tendencies. And so the next day, I responded to the request. Now he could come visit our island anytime. You sure he won't trash our island too? Mercy asked. I don't see any reason he would. We could report him to Nintendo and to Reddit for scamming. He's just a harmless kid. I told her. I'm sure he wouldn't risk his Switch account being suspended for something like ruining our island. So the next day, when he asked to come over and play, I didn't hesitate. The little sequence played and he stepped out of the airport, but he looked different. Instead of his usual attire, he was wearing a custom-made shirt that said F.U., and it gave me a bit of a chuckle. I knew the kid liked to be edgy, and I figured that he thought, now that we were best friends in the game, he could be himself. Most noticeably, though, was that Alex was wearing a mask that obscured his avatar's features. The closest I could describe was it was a kabuki mask. His hair was also covered. To be honest, at first I wasn't sure it was actually him. As soon as he stepped out of the island... I made a wave with my avatar and he started to send a chat message. Time to end this. I don't know what I thought would happen, but for some reason, my controller wouldn't let me respond. My player was frozen in place. End this. End you. Please end me. Then he got out his axe and he started messing everything up. 
chopping down trees, digging up flowers, all the hard work my wife and I had put into our island. Every islander that came by, Alex got out his net and slammed it into their head, just to piss him off. All while constantly typing out bizarre and dark profanity onto the chat. Stuff I can't even repeat because, well, frankly, it was just too nasty. I kept trying to reconnect my controller, figure out a way to stop him from destroying the entire island. And Marcy heard me cursing at the TV in frustration. She muttered, just unplug the game. And I didn't know if that was a good idea, but I was out of options. So I reached out behind our flat screen and pulled the power cord out from the wall socket. The game immediately died and the screen went black, giving me a moment to stare at it in disbelief. What happened? Did the kid mess up our game? She asked. I quickly hooked everything up and loaded up the game. And it was worse than I thought. As soon as I tried to load up my save data, an error message came up. Data corrupted. No save file found. My jaw literally dropped. Damn kid made us lose all our game progress. I shouted as I instinctively threw the controller down in frustration. Told you not to trust him, Marcy said, shaking her head. I was beyond mad. I wanted revenge. As soon as I confirmed the game was basically irreversibly damaged, I sent an email to Nintendo and reported Alex's account. Then I went on Reddit and made a post to the message board warning everyone else to watch out for his scam. Did the same thing a few days in a row, determined to get the word out of their cheating and abusive gameplay. Nintendo was the first to reply. Hello, we've received a report on an account that doesn't exist. If you feel you made an error when inputting the console identification number, and feel free to send us another email with the correct information. I immediately checked Alex's code. I didn't get anything wrong. Had Alex used like a hacked account or something? I took a screenshot of the console identification number and sent another email in the meantime. I got a message back from another Reddit user that claimed they knew Alex. I don't mean to be rude, but I think you're making a mistake here, was their response. I quickly typed out mine. Look, you may think you know your friend, but Alex was rude and disrespectful in the game. I'm just trying to warn the community of their behavior. A few minutes later, I got a response. And it wasn't what I expected. I don't know how to explain this. But Alex died. Back in January, he never got a chance to play the game. He always talked about how much he loved it, though. My blood ran a little cold. It seriously gave me a shiver down my spine, but I I wasn't just going to take their word on it. So I privately messaged, providing them with what info I could on the console I had that was associated with Alex. Someone might be using your dead friend's game console or hacking it. Very disrespectful of their memory, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, I said in the DM. That doesn't make any sense. Alex never even got the Switch. He was on the list to make a wish, but he passed away before he got a chance to enjoy it. They sent me screenshots of Alex. Dying. He had cancer. Apparently he was a bigger Animal Crossing fan than I realized. Playing it since the GameCube days. And perhaps strangest of all was the clothes that he wore in the hospital on his last days. They matched the avatar in the game. The next day I got another email from Nintendo, even stranger than before. We've checked our records and this is not a console identification number that is registered. Recommended that you do not engage with this player as they may be dangerous. And that was putting it lightly. I couldn't believe it was possible, but I was starting to believe I might have been playing with a with a dead person. That, that night I lay in bed and I thought about the game and Alex for a long time. There didn't seem to be any way for this person to exist. But I still couldn't determine if it was a prank. So I messaged Alex's friend one last time. I know this is probably a strange request, but do you have proof that Alex died? Response. You're a sick bastard to ask something like that. Go rot in hell. They blocked me from Reddit, and I was no closer to finding the truth. I was pretty sure I never would. Instead, I contacted my local store and asked them about getting a replacement switch. As soon as we get one in again, we'll give you a call. It took three weeks, and I forgot all about the bad and strange experience. Then I got a new console, 
and my wife made a suggestion. Just start a new account, clean slate. This time, let's try not to play online so much. And I agreed with that. I got the system set up. I started up Animal Crossing again. Started brand new Amity Island. The screen went black just as the title came up. It glitched for a second, and then... And then I saw what looked like a ghostly apparition. My ghosts got clammy, my, my mouth got dry. Strange soulless eyes stared at me through the screen. And a message appeared. You online? Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's podcast. You can find Mr. Creepypasta Storytime on any kind of podcasting platform if you're watching on YouTube, and if you're listening to the podcast already, you can find Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube. <laughs> for those of you that are interested in seeing me do more than just tell scary stories, you can also check me out at twitch.tv slash Mr. Creepypasta. During the weekdays around 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, I usually stream video games, and sometimes they're Resident Evil, and sometimes they're not. I'm also on Patreon. You can find a whole bunch of other people supporting on Patreon in the description down below, but there is a very, very special thank you to these people in particular. Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Creepypasta Adam, Ken Lando Higuchi, Mazakin, Champinsky, The Red Oak Shield Virus, G Weevil 3, Diana Krause, Steven Van Huss, Chance Burton, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Barbara Maceo, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, S-Man, Kirisuba, Bad Honey, Someone You Love, Said the King 56, Somber Puppet, Wolfie Nums, Shadow Morningstar, Sean Mills, Jesse Gonzalez, Mad Marshtomp, Z Kearley, Cassie Core, Mr. Thud, and Patrick Schoolmeister. These guys are the real MVPs, and all of you who are listening are also the real MVPs. Stay safe, everyone, and sweet dreams.